About two years ago, I bought this box, Necromunda Dark Uprising. And at the time, I was really excited about it. I love Necromunda and I love Terrain, and this contained new models for both. But for whatever reason, the months went by and I never touched it. After the initial spark of excitement and that rush of FOMO to get this limited edition box set came out, I realized that I didn't really like the models that much. The Corpse Grinder cult in particular, they have these really distinctive masks that the more I looked at them, the more I thought they just kind of looked like the rabbit from Donnie Darko, and not in a good way. So today, I decided to take some risks, swap some pieces around, and see if with a quick paint job, I can turn these things from models I don't like into something I'm excited about again. I started by building some of the bodies, which are way more muscular than the average Joe, but that's fine. Corpse grinders are supposed to be necromundans who work in one of the least glamorous industries. They process human bodies into nutritive corpse starch, which is a food staple in necromunda. The work is so gruesome that Korn, the chaos god of blood, starts whispering to them, and before they know it, they're full-blown chaos worshippers. With regards to the muscularity, I'm okay with that bit because working in the food service industry, it makes sense that they would have access to better nutrition. I remember watching a documentary about uh, former heavyweight champion Max Baer, who attributed his tremendous muscularity to the fact that he worked as a butcher's boy as a kid. So there you go. The easiest and simplest way to transform a miniature is with a head swap. And simple is good. I have all these cool old heads from the Chaos Terminator Lord sprue and old Space Marine kits I have, so I mix and match some of those heads, replacing these masks that I don't like, and it really changes the look of the models, giving them a much more human look, which is something that I really like. Just the positioning of the head can add so much character to a miniature as well. Something as simple as angling the head downwards so it looks like they're looking through their eyebrows can give them a sinister and aggressive sort of intent. So I leaned into that. The Corpse Grinder cult kind of comes in two sizes. There's the big miniatures, which are the champions and the leaders and what they call the skinners, and then there are the smaller ones, which are the initiates. And so for the initiates, I needed some smaller heads. And for those, I went to the Necromunda Orlock Ganger kit. Now the Necromunda Orlock Gang are sort of a blue collar gang, and they have a lot of weird distinctive facial hair. Like some of them have sideburns, and they have like, one of them's got like a little Howie Mandel, like chin spinach soul patch type thing. So with a sharp knife, I trimmed away some of that more eccentric hairstyles to get a more streamlined, bald cultist sort of look. It's amazing how just a little haircut can transform a piece and make it pretty much unrecognizable and something unique. On one of the initiates, I decided to give him a hand flamer, which is an option that they can take that isn't included in the kit. Luckily, I have an old hand flamer from a Space Marine kit, so I trimmed off any Space Marine iconography, cut it off on the hand, and gave it to my little initiate. The fact that he's wearing kind of a Space Marine glove doesn't really bother me, because who knows, he could have been using a flamer one time and it exploded and he had to have his hand replaced with metal or something like that. You can always make up an excuse for why a piece doesn't exactly match, and it actually just adds a little bit more character to the figure as you do it. You know who else likes meat? Sharks. Which is an awkward segue into today's sponsor, Surfshark VPN. People all around the world use VPNs or virtual private networks to increase their privacy and security when online. But not all VPNs are built the same. Surfshark VPN comes jam-packed with loads of features to provide the best value to you as a customer. One subscription allows you to install and run Surfshark on as many devices as you like, and they have apps for all different platforms. There's 24-7 support, a 30-day money-back guarantee, and a strict no-logs policy, which means that Surfshark VPN will never store your data. I personally like to use a VPN when I'm visiting family up in Canada so I can watch my favorite Netflix shows and movies that are only available in the US, like Under Siege, starring Steven Seagal, for example. Surfshark VPN can also be used to circumvent internet restrictions in countries that censor the internet and blocks over a million malicious websites. It also has a kill switch to protect your privacy by disconnecting you from the internet if for whatever reason you happen to be disconnected from the VPN service at any time. So give it a try today, guys. If you visit the link in the description and use the promo code ERIC, you'll get a whopping 83% off and three months free. Thanks Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Now let's get back to it. So I had this vision when I was planning these guys of one of the guys looking through kind of like a mat of greasy dark hair that's hanging down. Something about that like just really says chaos cultist to me. So to make some hair, I used some two-part green stuff epoxy putty. Sculpting hair is not too difficult if you know a few simple tips and tricks. First of all, I put a little bit of oil on the back of my hand. 
And what that does is it helps with the stickiness of the green stuff putty. By having that oil handy, you can oil up your tools or your fingertips as needed and make sure things aren't sticking around too much and you have the amount of control that you need. So to sculpt the hair, I put a little blob of putty on each side of the head. The key to getting realistic hair is, first of all, you gotta nail the hairline. So with my silicone sculpting tool, I started by blending the hair into the scalp at the front and making a nice little widow's peak. And then I came through and did a center part along the top of his head with that same silicone sculpting tool. With these rough shapes sort of in place, I started using the back of the hobby knife because it has a nice fine straight edge that allows me to delineate several different strands and locks of hair. The key to this is you want them to be a uniform thickness and maybe tapering a little bit towards the end, but you don't want them to be too wonky and thick and thin or it just won't look right. As a final detail, I added a nice strand hanging in front of his face, which gives him a lot of character. This guy here is one of the champions, and as you can see, he's got a special weapon called a flensing saw, which is essentially a skill saw that he swings around by the cord, which is so insanely dangerous and just delightfully silly that I absolutely had to include this guy in the gang. But something about him just didn't look quite right. Like his, he didn't look like he had enough stature. He didn't look formidable enough. So I went back to my Terminator sprue and I chose out two nice thick meaty pauldrons and with those big shoulder pads and a little bit of putty to fit them into place I was able to give him this sort of hulking imposing frame that I wanted that makes him look more like a juggernaut character that fits his role as the enforcer in the gang a little bit better. So really quickly, as you can see, I've been able to convert up a pretty cool gang with just a few simple tips and tricks. And they look totally unique from what you see on the back of the box and totally my own. So now let's see if we can take them to the next level with a coat of paint. The first thing that I do is I prime them all with Citadel Wraith Bone Spray. Now Wraith Bone is a nice satin finish off-white paint. And what this satin finish does is it allows the contrast paints that we're gonna use to slip into the cracks rather than just staining the raised surfaces. Citadel spray paints are more expensive than regular spray paints, but this one has kind of a special property, so I spring for this when I use this. But if you wanna use alternatives and you got a good suggestion, let me know in the comments below and I'd be happy to hear. To paint the flesh, I mix up some Gulliman flesh and a little bit of purple wash and a little bit of medium to get sort of a more pale, sickly sort of flesh tone. I figure these guys spend all their time working in the meat shop and uh, don't get any sunlight. So this unhealthy skin tone suits them a little bit better. And I apply that to all the exposed skin areas. Next, I use Skeleton Horde contrast paints on all the weapons and armor plates to get a nice bone color. This is gonna be a nice pale color that's gonna offset and highlight blood spatters that we're gonna do in the next step. I paint pretty much everything else with black Templar contrast paints. I leave the apron on the front white because this kind of helps sell the whole butcher thing. So far, I'm really happy with how the colors look blocked in. With just a few paints, I can already see what the model's gonna look like and know I'm headed in the right direction. So I press on. I use a little bit of silver to pick out some of the metallic details that I painted black in the previous section. Metallic paints always look better over black, so that's why I was so generous with the black paint a second ago. Next, I add a little bit of apothecary white to those white aprons, which will just add a little bit of depth to the shadows and make the whites look a little bit more realistic. Now for the fun part, weathering. I come in with some Rhinox Hide, which is a nice dark brown and I add little nicks and scratches and dings all over the armor in kind of the raised areas where I think they might bump into something. I also overbrush Rhinox Hide onto the base below, which will end up looking like a weathered metal when we're done with it. Next I come back in with some bright silver and I highlight some of the metallic bits and then also touch the edges of some of those dings that I did in the previous step. These are going to look like fresher dings that haven't had a chance to rust yet and give some variation to the weathering that'll add some nice realism. I also stipple and dry brush some metallic silver onto the base which will complete the weathered effect down there. Now for the gruesome part, the blood. You know, it's funny, because when I was a kid, I used to put blood on every blade, like just a big slap of red paint on there to indicate that this guy's been in battle and his sore is bloody, and then I kind of grew out of that, and I was like, that's dumb. Nobody has walks around with a bloody blade, you know? But if it's ever been appropriate, these blood god-worshipping cultists are gonna have some blood on their blades. And you know, they work in the butchering industry, they're gonna be splattered with blood, they're gonna have blood everywhere. But I have learned a few tricks since I was a kid. 
For one, blood tends to darken and turn a little bit more brownish as soon as it's exposed to air. So I mix a bit of brown in with my red paint and apply this mixture generously to the edges of all the weapons. Next, I dip the tip of a stiff bristle brush in the same paint mixture and flicking it with my finger, I add a nice splattering spray effect of blood droplets. And now it's impossible to completely control what you're doing when you're using this technique. So if you wanna take a little bit of sticky tack and put it over the face so you don't get a blood droplet right in the guy's eye, that's not a bad strategy. But if you practice a little bit on a Kleenex or a piece of paper towel before you do it, you'll have a decent amount of control. And that's it. These guys look awesome and I'm really happy with them. All it took was a bit of risk taking, a few quick techniques, and a simple paint job to transform these minis from something I didn't like into something that I'd be proud to put down on the tabletop. Huge thank you to all of my patrons for their support. As this is now my full-time job and I've got a baby on the way, it really helps a ton. If you want to join my Patreon and become part of our growing Discord community, then there will be a link in the description below. If you like this video, please subscribe for more, and we'll see you next time on Eric's Hobby Workshop.